All right, welcome back to the barn, everyone. This is the Master Chief. Uh, today I'm gonna do a little quick video on where we left off with this uh, front Dana 25 front axle. Um, I got one side completely tore apart. And as you see, I'm, a, I'm gonna show you how all this comes apart. I've taken a lot of the bolts out for the sake of time, um, but I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how all the pieces come out. And then I'll, I'll show you the, uh, we'll start with the other side first. I'll show you what it looks like once it's all done. I already broke this one down. Um, there's your steering ball that your knuckle rides in it on. Um, you have a small bearing here and one on the bottom. These are what your king pins ride in. And <clears throat> this is your actual steering knuckle from this side. I cleaned this one up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna have it send, still send it out, have it sandblasted. Uh, these are not all the same. All the Jeeps over the years, the, the 2A, the 3A, the 3B, all the C5s, these are all, they're, they're different, okay? Um, and even on these, if you see these two gussets here, um, this is something that they did later. The earlier models didn't have these two little reinforcement gussets right there. Um, so this is, uh, this is like a next generation from the earlier models with them gussets in there. So that steering knuckle rides on this ball and there's a big seal that goes around the back side of this that bolts onto this and that's what keeps it on, keeps it on here. So tore that side down and if you look up in there, you can see that right there. That is a bronze bushing. You need to make sure that's good, not wore out or banged up and stuff. There's a seal that rides in here. Because uh, you don't, like on a typical uh, differential, you don't want differential oil coming from here all the way out here. Because this is packed with grease. You don't want fluids to come all the way out here like on a normal or other vehicles, you'll have a seal in here that keeps, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, you have a seal here and then you have a seal inside the um, back here to keep that fluid out from your grease area. All right, so go back over here real quick and start showing you how to, how this all comes apart. Uh, get my light here so you can see that's your spindle right there on the axle shaft. I've got one bolt hanging, holding in the backer plate on. I'll take that bolt out and show you uh, where all this goes afterwards. We're gonna take it piece by piece. I'm gonna show you how it all comes off. Um, the king pins, the hose guard right there, all that stuff, all right? <clears throat> so, get this light down. Again, don't air blast this with a with an air hose. Remember the asbestos, this is old stuff. Um, I promise you, uh, you don't wanna be breathing that crap in. So you're gonna take, there's six of these bolts, and I wanna show you something real quick here too. We talked about, let me get in here. This, this is where your bolt is. You got a bolt that goes here. And that hole right there, we talked about that before. That's your grease hole. So when you see your seal leaking, the grease will run out of there and drip down on the ground, and that's how you know you have a bad seal. You want these holes to be clear. That hole should be clear. Now, if I stick this in there, yeah, somebody's plugged it up with the backer plate. They put it on there wrong. That should be open. There should be a hole. That should go all the way through to your seal right there. So this is incorrect. That should not be like that. Once we get the backer plate off, you'll see if it's that uh, retainer ring behind there, if it was put on crooked. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and open that up. So we'll take this, take this one bolt out that's holding the plate on. Like I said, I took all these bolts out. These are half inch bolts holding all that on. I took them all out for the sake of time. So this, your spindle, all that will come off. Just like that. And 
and that exposes your backside. And they got the wrong plate on there. That's why you couldn't see that grease hole. There should be a hole right there at the bottom, right in there where my shadow's pointing. Um, they got the wrong plate on this. So somebody's changed this at some point. So we'll set this aside. Um, there's probably shims and all on there and a seal. We'll go through that later. Now, what this does is this exposes your inner axle shaft. Now, I'm going to show you, if you look up in there, this is full of grease and you have these ball bearings. There's five of them in there. There's four around the middle and there's one in the middle. That middle one right there has a pin in it. It keeps it from moving. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, from the other side that I've already got cleaned up. So we'll go over here to the table. <clears throat> so this is the driver's side. I've already marked it there just, you know, so we don't get goofed up. And I mean, they're different lengths, but if you look in there and see there's ball bearings, this has already been cleaned up. And it's ready to go get packed again and get put back in there. We'll, uh, you know, we'll clean these spots up where the seals ride and then this is the uh the spindle you got a bearing that rides here and one that rides right here this middle nothing rides on that middle piece and then you have a seal there's a bushing right there this is a this is a bushing bronze bushing right there you want to make sure that's not war you can caliper these and check them and uh and it puts up against the seal so remember in the last video i showed you there was two nuts that ride on this when you take that outside hub cap off there's two thin nuts and two washers so the first one goes on as a washer that slides up in this groove then you do your nut, your first nut, and that's the one that gets set at 50 foot-pounds, and then you back it off one, one facet or one sixth. Then you put your second washer on, or what they call the bendable washer, and then you put your second nut on top of that, and then you bend the washer over one facet of that nut, and that's like a lock washer. It keeps it from backing off. Now I'm gonna show you what I found in there now these are cleaned out. I cleaned all the grease and shit off of them. But these are your, this is the setup. So there's two washers and two nuts, four pieces. So here's the first washer with the little tooth that goes in that groove right there. This washer's still good. We'll reuse that. The second nut, that's this one. This is the one that gets set at 50 foot pounds. Um, you can see on here, this one's been beat up. A lot of times what guys do, and they don't have the right tool, which was a little hub uh, lock nut socket. Um, they get in there with a freaking chisel and a hammer and a hammer on these corners. You, you can't set the torque by doing that on this one. 50 foot pounds on this, remember. So this, somebody's chiseled on this one. It's not too bad, but you can tell where they've chiseled on it second washer this is the bendable now you look at that that thing is seriously friggin roached out it's been bent and beat on and this this is ridiculous it's been bent in a couple places you only need to bend these on one facet of that of those nuts uh, this is a piece of crap this one we're getting in fact I'm getting all new nuts and, and the new bend, bendable now here's the outside nut. Now this one, <laughs> this is what you don't want to see. Somebody has taken this nut on and off of this spindle with a friggin' chisel or a screwdriver and a hammer. They beat on them corners to put, take it off and then they beat on them corners to put it back in. Don't do this. This is not correct. Use the right tool. Uh, like I said, you can't set the torque when you do this and the preload on the bearings. Um, this, this is somebody who didn't know what they were doing, just 
you know, don't do this. So that's uh, those are the pieces from the from the driver's side. Um, now I just want to talk about this axle for a minute. This is called a Bendix style axle, where it's got the five ball bearings inside there. There's a couple of others um, as Jeep as Jeep went on and progressed in technology and design. Uh, they developed other designs of this axle. The next one that came out after this is the Zeppa, and uh, that has an R in front of it, R-Z-E-P-P-A, and basically you don't see the, you don't see any of the inner workings in this. It'll be completely cupped, coned. You won't really see it from the side. Um, so that's a, just a, you know, recognition. This is a this is a Bendix. It moves back and forth and flexes and turns. And then you have the Zeppa, which is like a big cup that covers all this. And then the next one after the Zeppa is a uh, Spicer. <clears throat> and Spicer is goes back to this kind of design, except that it looks more like a standard drive shaft with a U-joint in there. So you'll have this piece of the drive uh, axle will have two ears. This piece of the axle will have two ears, very similar to this, but then it'll have holes, just like on a drive shaft that you would you would press in a new, like a four-way U-joint. That's what the, the Spicer axle looks like. Almost looks like a, a, a drive shaft with a U-joint in it. So there's this one, the Bendix, the Zeppa, and then the Spicer that has the U-joint. Be careful with these Bendix, because they will, you can pull them apart. It takes a little finesse, but you can pull these apart, and them damn steel balls will go flying everywhere. There's five of them, uh, about the size of, I don't know, one inch, three quarter, one inch balls. And there's five of them in there, and there's a little pin that holds that middle one. That stuff is just sitting in there, so it rotates and moves around on the, on the grease. So be careful when you pull these out because they will go flying everywhere and you gotta go find them. All right, so back over here, that's, this is what we were just talking about, right? So this is the one I haven't pulled out yet. You see the balls in there, all right? Now, what's gonna happen here is we go ahead and we'll pull, pull the axle out. Let me get a, paper towel here so we don't get grease everywhere so you're gonna pull this out it just it just comes right out and I'm gonna grab it up here so in case it does decide to come apart on me so it just comes right out this is the short side the driver sides the long side I'm gonna set this down in my oil catch get that at later and then you can see up in there all that grease, all that has to be cleaned out and then you'll pack in new grease. So next step, we're gonna take the king pins out. And I would like I said, I've already take, we're gonna take the hose guard off, which is this. And then I'm gonna take the top king pin out and take the bottom king pin out, which is right here. Now you need to be careful with these because just like your backer plates and hubs that go on here and inside your uh, differential where the pinions are, the pinion gear and your uh, races, there are shims all over this Jeep. They're everywhere. These king pins will have shims on them because there's bearings inside here, that ride inside these, these openings. There's a bearing on the bottom kingpin. There's a bearing on the top. This is the this is the kingpin from the this side. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but it has shims on it. As you can see, right there, these little shims. Do not do not get these mixed up from top to bottom or side to side, from driver side to passenger side. These are the 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 
preload and all was figured, the, the, the pressure on these from the factory or from the last time it was done. Uh, so hopefully somebody did it right and used the dial indicator and checked the, the preload on them. But your shim packs everywhere on this Jeep, that's always a good place to start when you put this back together, when you're checking uh, tolerances on these bearings. So keep them organized. Put them in a plastic baggie if you have to. Label them like this came from the top, driver's side, kingpin, you know, whatever. That's going to make it easy for you. Don't get them mixed, any of these shims mixed up. So <clears throat> we'll show you sometimes these Jeeps, this, I'll take this one bolt out and we'll get this. This is a uh, hose guard. We'll get it out of the way. Sometimes these Jeeps uh, shimmed on the top and bottom. Sometimes they just shimmed on the top. This one they shimmed on the top. So this, the two, two of the bolts to the kingpin, there's four bolts there. Two of these bolts uh, go through the hose guard. They're a little longer than the other. Other two, there's the hose guard. We'll clean that off and that'll go to the sand blaster. We'll throw that down there. Now, these king pins aren't pressed in. They're really loose. You can see that just comes right out. Work it out. And it may or may, yeah, this one's got shims. You can see right there. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So this one has, looks like a couple, couple of shims there. So we'll set that off to, with the bolts right here. And that one, that's all the shims there are. So then we'll come down here to the bottom where I've already stripped out all the bolts here. And we'll take the bottom king pin out, take this last bolt. And again, do not get these mixed up. You'll have a problem if you get them mixed up. You'll have to check everything. So take this last bolt out. That kingpin now, she'll just come out. Be careful because the you have some bolts on the back side, which will start taking the knuckle off. Oh, that one's in there. There she comes. So there's your bottom kingpin. Now, this knuckle, once you take all the back bolts off, put her on the back side, holding on this plate. I got two left in here. Once you take this back plate off, this back, uh, these bolts, there's, these are uh, 9 16 or I'm sorry, half inch bolts. You take these out. I got them all loosened, ready to go. Set that one aside. And then take this other one out. And then this whole knuckle will come off. If I just grab the knuckle and just work it real easy. And it'll slide right off. Got to, I'm going to have to separate the... Uh, might be stuck there with this plate and gasket this gasket this is a special gasket with a reinforcement plate on the back side I'll show you all that it's split in half it comes off now there's the other reef there we go so there's the knuckle there's the inside of your ball housing all that old Freaking 60, 70 year old grease is gonna have to come out of there.